everyone and welcome back to another Absurd Heroine video. So today we are playing Mono Green Food. So this is a deck that I have absolutely fallen in love with. It I don't know, there's something about it that just makes me happy. I think because it takes me back to like Eldraine when, when Throne of Eldraine first came out. I don't know. There's something in my brain that just really enjoys this deck. Um, and it's kind of focused around food, yes, but this is the big boy that kind of the reason why I made this deck in the first place is this dude, the Feasting Troll King. So it's a 7 6 for 6. Vigilance Trample. When it enters the battlefield, if you cast it from your hand, it can create three food tokens. And then you can sacrifice three food tokens to return it from your graveyard to the battlefield and activate, activate this ability only on your turn. So it's basically like you can cast it from the graveyard um, if you sacrifice for, for three food instead of casting using its casting cost. And the reason why this deck is good is because, um, well, food does actually have a lot of really good synergies, regardless of a particular cat that shall remain nameless. Um, and there's a lot of, you know, milling going on right now. So Feasting Troll King can just be milled straight into your graveyard. And then you're like, oh, hey, I happen to have free food. Here's a 7-6 Trample Vigilance deal with me. <laughs> and it recurs. Like, you just can't get rid of it. Unless, of course, you're like exile it or, or, or whatever. Um, so what do we have, uh, to support this? Basically we have Gilded Goose and Witch's Oven, uh, which is our turn one food makers. Very, very good cards, both of these. And Stone Coil Serpent is here because I've been having trouble with Ugin. <laughs> so, so Stone Coil Serpent is in here for anti-Ugin tactics, basically. Um, and it's a very good anti-Ugin tactic. So there's that. And there's, there's plenty of like, you know, Roxas running around and and Demir mill stuff going on. So like there's a lot of multicolored danger threats that are out and about right now. So Stone Quail Serpent's just an all-around like solid card to have. Then we have Primal Might as one of our removals. Then Trail of Crumbs. So Trail of, like Gilded Goose, Trail of Crumbs, and Witch's Oven are kind of like a really good like little food combo. Trail of Crumbs is probably the best. Or perhaps, okay. These two are really good. Witch's Oven is is also good, but if I were to choose between the two of them, Trail of Crumbs and Gilded Goose are just like, mm, amazing. Turn one Gilded Goose, turn two Trail of Crumbs, like you just get stuff, right? So when Trail of Crumbs enters the battlefield, you create a food token. Whenever you sacrifice a food, you may pay one. And then if you do, you look at the top two cards of your library and you may reveal a permanent card, put it into your hand and put the rest in the bottom of your library in any order. So it's like card advantage on top of kind of being able to choose what it is that you get. Of course, you can whiff on this. Like if we had two primal mites, you wouldn't be able to put that into your hand because it's only permanent cards. So it's only creatures, only artifacts, only enchantments, that kind of stuff. But it is very, very, very strong. And if you have a Gilded Goose out, you can sacrifice the food to make one mana and then use that one mana that you made to pay for Trail of Crumbs. So if you're just sitting around, you have a Gilded Goose and a Trail of Crumbs with nothing else to do and you have a food out, you can do that. It's very, very... Very, very good little combo. Then we have a Kazandu Mammoth because Kazandu Mammoth's just like really good right now um, in any green deck. Um, Gem Razor because Gem Razor is very good in any, you know, deck with Stone Coil Serpent in it or Gilded Goose. You know, you make a 4-4 flyer that can make food and stuff like that. It's really good. Then here's our uh, one of our food... Uh, also food combo cards wicked wolf when wicked wolf enters the battlefield it fights up to one target creature you don't control and then you can sacrifice the food to put a plus one plus one counter on it and it gains indestructible until end of turn and you tap it so that's really strong because you can't board wipe with this out right <clears throat> i mean if you have um extinction event then yes it doesn't you can't it's a, it doesn't survive an extinction event but it survives stuff like um shadow of the sky you know you it's very difficult to get rid of it unless you specifically have um a exile card and then, i mean there's plenty of that out there but just to have that a little bit of extra protection is is very good very strong and you can sacrifice a food for no cost right so if you have trail of crumbs out and you're you're low on cards you want some more options in your hand you can sacrifice a food with wicked wolf and then pay for it with tra trail of crumbs it's very very low um uh, very very low cost to yourself to to get something into your hand potentially then we have Elder Gargaroth, which is just a big fat beater. Like he's just good. So I only have two of them and I only have two of Vivian Monsters Advocate because Vivian's strong as well. Um, you can cast creatures from the top of your library and put three, three green beast creature tokens into play uh, that can have vigilance, reach or trample. It's very, very strong. And then if you can't, if you want to minus her, you can minus her to get 
some other stuff out of your deck, which is really good. When you cast your next creature spell this turn, search your library for a creature card with lesser converted mana cost, put it into the battlefield, and then shuffle your library. Then, of course, we have our Feasting Troll King and our Great Henge. And Great Henge is just amazing. <laughs> you, you kind of want Great Henges. And you know what? I am missing something in here. I, I remembered I wanted to put something in here for the meta, right? Because... Scavenging Ooze is too good at the moment to not play with one. Hold on. And styling is very important. I don't have the other styles for it. Whatever. We can keep the uh, special card art style. So what are we going to remove for Scavenging Ooze? That is the question. Maybe a Witch's Oven? Maybe two Witch's Ovens. Because like I said, Witch's Ovens are good. But they're not as good as Trail of, Crum Trail of Crumbs or Gilded Goose. I don't think I would take out any of the top end for, for a scavenging ooze either. Okay. So that's it. Scavenging ooze is just good. If you're playing green, you kind of want to be playing with scavenging ooze in this meta right now because there's just so much graveyard stuff going on that ooze is good. And if this was a best two out of three, if I played best two out of three, then ooze would probably just be in the sideboard, honestly. But I'm not. I'm playing best of one. And you kind of have to, like, build your decks around stuff like that. All right. So anyway, with all of that being said... Let's get in. I guess this is keepable. We want to draw some of our lower end creatures. If possible. We're up against Luros. That could be anything. Alright. Gingerbread Cabin is not the worst draw in the world, but we do need some creatures here. Get in for one, Vessel. Skyclave Shade. Alright. More. More lands. Alright. Now we need creatures. We've got the lands that we need. Now we need the creatures. Uh, how many? Those two. All right. Goodness. That is a lot of lands. So we're going to be popping this food and drawing a card. Another trail of crumbs or a scavenging ooze. I guess we need the ooze here, huh? Okay, so they're Mardu? Mardu Luros. Alright. Very interesting. This does not count as a forest. That is good to know. Alright. End turn. Next turn we can Vivian. Hopefully that will help stop some of the bleeding. Blood Chief's Thirst, all right. Okay. You can take a hinge. All right. Um, and I guess it really doesn't matter. So we'll give it vigilance. We will adapt to any threat. We have an elder gargareth coming up, which is nice. We do need removal for this Luros at some point. Okay. Attacking in just face, eh?
All right. So we'll just kill this one. And yeah, they'll be able to cast it again, but whatever. Yep. All right, here we go. So we can minus her to cast Elder Gagaroth and Wicked Wolf. Or minus two her. And we can Wicked Wolf the Skyclave Shade. We're gonna lose a Great Henge. Yeah, we have to do it this way, I think. And then we can draw a card. A1. For another land? Do we need another land? I think we just need a Mammoth. Okay. So they can kill Vivian here, and they probably should. Aw. Dang it. Well, at least they're not playing Loros here, I suppose. Okay. I hate this. I hate this too. <laughs> Goose. So we can Great Henge, and then we can Goose? No, Kazan do Mammoth? Okay, Troll King. Troll King's good. Troll King can block, Troll King can attack. Doesn't have reach though, but Gem Razor does have reach. Okay. I guess I'll block that way. Do they have some sort of pump or whatever? I'm not quite sure. Or do they just want to acquisitions expert? Oh, Malakir's are worth, okay. All right. So they can get rid of Feasting Troll King. Uh, nah. We'll give them these two. So now they can Luros and... That's something for one, right? They only have one more land. Can't cast both of them. Let's hope we can kill this Luros here. Okay. All right. Okay. Builded Goose. Food. Elder Gargaroth seems good to me. Castle Garenbrig. Also not bad. And I guess we just won't attack here. We're just gonna defend ourselves and hopefully gain enough life to, you know, fight back here. We'll be able to attack with our Elder Gagaroth, and then hopefully at some point we'll get enough food to get our Feasting Troll out. Feasting Troll King. Ass, you gonna attack? Yeah? Hmm. Okay. Questionable. It's very questionable. Up. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not sure about that one. I'm not sure about that attack. I guess we kind of we just valued them. Once we got our great hand out, we just over we just got too much value over the Luru stuff going on here. 
I really don't like this hand. <laughs> it's good if we draw lands. Um, but that doesn't always happen when you play magic. I think we have to mulligan it. Okay. We'll keep this one. We'll put uh, the Troll King under, I guess. Hopefully we don't have to cast this Kazando as a as a land, played as a land. Valakut Stoneforge. Okay. What do we got going on here? They have something for X. So a Stone Coil Serpent? They have something that they can cast for no mana. Makes me a little nervous. Labyrinth of Scophos. Okay. Aw. Bye, Scavenging Ooze. You were nice while we had you. Alright. Come on, something that we can play our land. Okay. Okay. Makes me feel a little bit better about casting Kazandu Mammoth as an actual Kazandu Mammoth. Bonders Enclave. Okay. So, colorless ramp? Alright, Vivian next turn. I'm hoping that we draw some gas here. Another Bonders Enclave. Solemn Simulacrum, sure. They'll be blocking with that next turn. And a Maze Mind Tome. Yeah, so they've got some colorless shenanigans going on here. Okay. Here we go. Putting one on the bottom, that's good for us. Draw that card. So should we actually cast Vivian here or should we Stone Coil Serpent? Actually a really good question. Stone Coil Serpent can get in. What are they trying to cast here? They can cast an Ugin next turn. So maybe we should Stone Quail Serpent. To protect ourselves against an Ugin. The next turn we can Vivian. I do, I, I do love that standard is like really weird now, but it's also very like, what's going on? <laughs> Most of the decks I've played against have been like really weird, which is awesome, but I don't know how to predict them. It's difficult to predict this meta at the moment. And I would rather have it that way, to be honest with you. All right, we've got another Solemn Simulacrum coming out. Not quite sure what exactly it is that they're looking for. What are you looking for? All right. Okie dokie. Let's see what we got. Maybe I should have given that trample. Yeah, we've got, we've got some artifact shenanigans going on here. I'm not quite sure what. I am confused. It's a nice kind of confusion, though. I don't mind it too much. But for real, what's going on here? Fair supplies. Can they sacrifice a certain amount of artifacts to do something? This isn't like a Doom deck. I'm not 100% sure. We kill them right now. We gem razor onto this beast. 
Then it'll be 4, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah. We can kill this guy. Or whatever. Guy scanner. That one. get in okay we didn't get to find out what it was exactly that they were doing which makes me a little sad that makes me a wee bit sad if anybody knows if miss if if you mcphilly know uh know the channel or anything please let me know what you're doing here because i am like super curious now super curious okay i mean lands are a problem as per usual I don't seem to be getting, like, my early drops in these games. <laughs> I think I had Goose. I would like to not have to cast or uh, put this down as a land, but... Hmm. I think I have to. It's too risky. It's too risky to not, unfortunately. Season Hollow Blade. Oh boy. We're playing against enchantments. All right. So we are just going to trailer crumbs here. I think next turn we can stone coil serpent. Azri Cat. Oh boy. Oh boy, coming out of the gates really hot here. Coming out of the gates really hot. Okay. So we're going to have to Wicked Wolf this, I guess. And hope that we just get up to six man eventually? Oof. Oh boy. Yep. All right. How do we want to play this? Are we going to block and sack? That Well, that was what I was originally going to do. I was going to block and sack. And I guess that's what I'm going to do still. I don't know if we can afford to do that anymore. We have to, we have to get this Basri Ket down a little bit. Otherwise, he's just going to run away with the game. So we're getting in like this. The nice thing is that Wicked Wolf can block the Season Hollow Blade all day. <laughs> I mean, until <laughs> until we run out of food, which is soon. Which is soon. Sure. Courage will bloom in all who seek justice. You want to minus your Basri Cat? Luminarch. Okay, so you're dying next turn. Okay, going for the Season Hollow Blade again. We'll protect you. Okay. So we block here. We don't want to take six. Unfortunately, we can't pay for that. Pass. Ow.
Okay. So we do have to kill this Luminarch. So do we want to get in against Basriket? And I think we kind of have to. Unfortunately, we didn't draw mana, which we need. We need land. We needed land. And turn. Hopefully they don't have any more dudes, or we draw um, a gem razor. We drew a gem razor, that would be nice. You need more land though, also. Gem razor or land, one or the other, I think. Would it satisfy me? We're not going to be blocking the season hollow blade, unfortunately. Azrikek can be strong when you can't get rid of it. We haven't drawn any of our, uh, like, fight cards. Unfortunately. Oh. Okay. Idol of Endurance. So, a Luminous Aspirant? Okay. Sure. Interesting. Idol of Endurance deck. Okay. Alright. So, we do have to block this. I think we're kind of screwed here, honestly. Because we're not going to be able to handle a Basri Ket if it pops off, right? So we go to one. I guess we go to one. <clears throat> and they don't have trample. So we have to hope that we can just like hold the ground, basically. Basically. That is what we have to hope for. And because of Kazandu Valley, once again, that did not come into play untapped. All right, so we cast this for one. And hope that they can't kill it. So that we can block, sacrifice, make a food, eat the food, and then draw something relevant. Oh my god, another Basri get. <laughs> Dude. Dude, please. Yep. If they also Luminarch Aspirant their Luminarch Aspirant, then we can't sacrifice a food. Uh, no, we can't. Okay. It still works. It still works. Eat the food. Go to four. Hopefully draw something that saves us from this. A gingerbread cabin? Does more food save us from this? What's he at? Four? Uh, it might, with a feasting troll king. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know, man. I, I, I do not think that we're surviving. Just so you know. Maze Mind Tome, okay. All right. Make a food. We kill Bazri.
And I think we actually cast Vivian here, right? Or can, we can, um, we get six. Yeah, actually, let's do this. Wait. Never mind, I thought we had one more. We don't have one more. One, two, three, four. Five. Right, so only, okay, yeah, right. Because we could have cast the Great Henge maybe on top of that facing Troll King. But if we if we cast Vivian here, we get a dude to block. We block. And then next turn we can cast Feasting Troll King and anything else in our deck. Like an Elder Gargaroth, for example. With our minus with our minus two. Um, so we're gonna go there there's no like haste white flyer, right? I think we're gonna go with Vigilance here. I call and okay. Answers. Let's hope, let's see if we can squeak by. If we can squeak by on this. That would that would be very nice. I don't have too much hope, but them drawing a card is a good sign. If they have removal for either of our two creatures, we are dead. We are just straight up dead. Oh, they got it! Dang it. Yeah. That's unfortunate. That is unfortunate. Wow. They didn't just straight up kill me. What? Why would they do that? I am very confuzzled at the moment. I mean, sure. <laughs> I'll take that. A uh, trail of crumbs. Or a land. If we have a land, then we can feasting troll king and great hinge. So, I guess we'll do that. Holy crap! <laughs> what? They just want the game to last longer? I am super confused. And I should have sacrificed- I was, like, I was so sure that we were dead that I just sacrificed that thing. <laughs> Ugh. Okay. Good god. Oh, I sacrificed the friggin... I, I didn't sac... Rather, I didn't sacrifice Vivian's little beast that she could make. Okay, so... We're not doing anything. But we're gonna cast the Great Henge, obviously. But we're not doing anything else. We're gonna keep up the two Great Henge to eat food, just in case something ridiculous happens. I mean, something ridiculous already did happen. I can't believe... <laughs> I can't believe that. I can't believe they didn't just kill us. I've seen misplays in my time. They really focused on that Vivian. She had taunt. Oh my god, another Bazriket. Please, no, stop. Stop it with the Bazri Kets, please. Yep. I trust in your ability. Okie dokie. All right. So now we nom on a food. Nom. And we pay for that. Sure. Thank goodness this guy doesn't have trample. <laughs> Ugh. Okay. A goose. It's nice.
All right, we might we might actually be able to make this work. Actually, we might actually be able to make this work. Actually. All right, we are gonna get in against this dude now. Now it's our turn. Um, what do we want to do here? I guess we'll go for him and hit there. Whew. Okay, we can do this. <laughs> we can come back. They have given us a second chance and we shall not squander it. Alright. Okay. And now, we're just going to keep up our creatures and being able to eat food. Okay. Drawing a card. I mean, if they have a board wipe, then they still wouldn't be able to do anything, right? Because their season Hallowblade would be tapped. Another Maze Mind Tome. Okay. Blue Monarch Aspirant is big, though. Okay. I think we're going to eat a food. We need, like, one of our fight- we need a Primal Might. I guess I didn't put, um, there's another fight card that I had in here at one point, and I guess I took it out. <laughs> but maybe I should put it back in. The ram through. I had a ram through in here at one point. Goose? Sure. Fly over the top. And I guess I'll have them eat a food. This dude eat a food. So that we can draw. Draw more. Another feasting troll king? Sure, why not? <laughs> I'll take it. Look how far we've come from our struggling to keep up with them. We just had to turn a corner. We had to cast the great hench. Good god. Okay. Uh, so I'm just gonna cast some creatures in hopes that we, you know, draw a fight card. An oven. We have a lot of food. We have a lot of food, everybody. Okay. Give us our fight cards. We haven't drawn one this whole entire- this whole recording, I have not drawn a single fight card. They're all on the very bottom. We have an army of geese. We have a whole flock of golden geese. I mean, I guess that works against their idol, right? They don't have any creatures in the graveyard. They do have an Elspeth, though. Okay. Um, so I guess we just attack with everything for the moment, right? Um, they can kill one Feasting Troll King and we can bring it back. If we so desire. And they die if they don't block. Oh wait, no. Because this is... Yeah, okay. That works. That works, I suppose. Okay. 
Hit one. Make it big enough to kill her. It's actually really good for us. And we're not gonna pay for this. Because we want to cast Scaving and Jing Ooze and get it back out of the graveyard. Get it out of the graveyard. Go away. Okay. That's fine. Alright, we are going to nom the troll king to make more food i haven't been i've been making mistakes without with the witch's oven sorry i'm not used to playing with it um not used to playing with a troll king or with the witch's oven so i haven't been sacrificing it things properly please forgive me okay So we shall feasting troll king. One, two, three. No, we don't want to do any of that. We could. We could, but we don't want to. Right? We don't need to. We do not need to at the moment. I want to cast the scavenging ooze. And get this this puppy out. Maybe Elspeth. Maybe we should do Elspeth first. Okay. I think that's sufficient. I think we're at a good place. I think we're at a good spot. <laughs> I could be wrong, but I think we're at a good spot here. Another Luminarch Aspirant, sure. They were very, very close to killing us. They could have killed us. They decided to kill Vivian instead of us, so. You know, we're punishing them pretty hard for that at the moment. At one point in this game, I did not think it was possible to win. And at this point in the game, I do not think that it's possible to lose, but we shall see. Watch me get absolutely stomped by something crazy. Like, even if they had a board wipe, we're still fine. Because we can feast in Troll King. We can just get our Troll Kings back, two of them. And we have a Stone Coil Serpent in our... In our, uh... In our hand. Last Casket. Sure. For our ooze. That makes me a little sad. That one does make me a little sad. making their aspirant quite big okay another wolf good draw should have castle garen break there I'm being sloppy here playing sloppy all right and we just attack with like you know everything we just attack with, like, everything, you know? I don't know if there's any way that they can get out of this. They have one white mana. One card in their hand. There's a card that can give two things indestructible, but one of those things has to be a non-human. Who's gonna bin that? These two kill each other. So we'll just sacrifice the Stroll King. Not the other one, though. So we kill their Luminarch Aspirant. And then we kill them. Get in there, geese. Honk! Alright. That was a very weird game. But I'll take it. I will take it! So, that was only three games. Uh, but one of those games was super long. So, I think I'm gonna stop it there. That game was like two games, kind of. 
it was a game where we lost and then we won <laughs> against the same deck, basically. Um, which was very interesting and awkward. So that's my mono food, mono green food. I really like this deck. Like I said, it makes me happy. I, I don't know. It's something about like Eldraine might have come out in a good time in my life. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> But just the memories of like playing food and Wicked Wolf and like feasting troll king, like good cool cards. Like these are cool cards. Um, and the deck actually works pretty well. There are plenty of ways that you can play this too. This is just my version of it. You could put in a full four of Kazando Mammoths. I think you should actually add whoops, not not you. Ram through. So I did have Ram through in here at one point, but I guess I cut it for something else. I can't remember what. Maybe the schedule. <laughs> yeah, it's is that what happened? Did I pull the ram throughs out for the scavenging oozes in the beginning? I don't know. When I go and edit this video, I'm going to be like, you're stupid for... No, no, no. no. I think I cut one Elder Gagarath and one Vivian for two scavenging oozes in the beginning, right? Yes. Or maybe it was Witch's Ovens. I don't know. It was one or the other. <laughs> it was one or the other. Um, I might get rid of the gingerbread cabins, though. Gingerbread cabins weren't super awesome because they... they're only good late game. They're actually very bad in the early game. And in the late game, you have plenty of other ways of getting food. So I don't think that gingerbread crabbin is worth it. I just kind of like it because it creates a different kind of food token than all of the other foods that we have, right? So then you can have like these three beautiful, gorgeous pictures of food. And I love like food. <laughs> you have like this like huge feast just going on. So I do like it for that purpose. <laughs> but, you know, some people actually like to play good cards instead of just looking at pretty cards. So, you know. If you're that kind of person, then take out Gingerbread Captain Cabin cabin, and put in more forests, I would say. Or maybe two, two more mammoths, because the mammoths are actually like really good, but they didn't work well with the Gingerbread Cabin. So if you took out these and added in two more Kazandu mammoths and maybe two more of something else, another dual face land card, then um, that's probably not a bad idea. So yeah. That's my mono green food. I hope you guys really liked it. I definitely enjoyed playing it for you. This deck is so much fun to play. And until the next time we meet, good luck and all your games. Ciao.